What does baptism do exactly? Does it save us, or is it just a symbol? The reformed answer is, it's complicated. Hey guys, welcome back to Kingdom Craft, where I build this big church in Minecraft while I talk about Christianity. And I'm going to be adding a baptismal font to the front of the church today, so I thought I'd talk about baptism. So, like I said in my intro, the reformed view of baptism is complicated. It's not as simple as baptism automatically saves someone, nor is it just as simple. So I want to clarify something. The reformed view of something is really just what we think is the biblical view. The point of reformed theology is not to start a brand new form of Christianity. It's the Reformation, not the Revolution. A lot of people think the Protestant Reformation is the Protestant Re Revolution. But really, we're trying to be the Catholic Church reformed by the Word of God. The motto of the Reformation, at least to the Presbyterian Church, is reformed and always reforming according to the Word of God. So the Catholic Church has always said that baptism saves. And they say this because the Bible says this. 1 Peter 3.21 says baptism saves. So the, what we're trying to do is we're trying to clarify what that means. So the, the Bible clearly does say that baptism saves. And every time the Bible talks about baptism, it attributes some saving power to it. Sometimes it's called the washing of regeneration. Regeneration means born again. Sometimes it's called... Um, uh, Peter says, repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins, and this promise is for you and your children. So a lot of Baptists are taught that baptism is like an outward sign of an inward transformation, and it's like, I could see how you could think that, but that's just never what the Bible describes baptism as. I think the reason they want to say that is because they're worried if they say baptism saves, that will take away from the Protestant doctrine of salvation by faith alone. But that's not necessary, because the guy who, to who coined the term salvation by faith alone, Martin Luther, really strongly believed that baptism saves. So historically, Protestants don't see any contradiction between saying salvation is by faith alone and baptism saves. But that's why it's, our view is a bit complicated, because on the surface, it can be hard to say both of those things at the same time. Which is why, like I said, we need to clarify what we, what we mean when we say baptism saves. So... Baptism is not magic water. There t there's two errors that we really try to avoid, that Reformed theology tries to avoid, even though a lot of people slip into one or the other. One error is where we think it's magic water, that in itself has the power to wash away sins. The Catholic view tends to lean toward this. And the other error is the, the Anabaptist view, um, which is that it's just a symbol. So we need to find that very delicate middle ground between saying it's just a symbol and that it washes away sins. And we think this is what the Bible's trying to communicate. Because all throughout the Bible, God uses physical means to convey his promises of salvation. And Reformed theology really tries to see a continuity between the sacraments of the New Testament, like baptism and the Lord's Supper, and the sacraments of the Old Testament, like um, circumcision and even, even the Tree of Life. In all those cases, God is giving his people a visible sign and tying a promise to the sign. But the promise is only effective for those who have faith. So baptism is not magic. Baptism is an outward symbol that has a promise attached to it, and the promise is activated for those who have faith. So the way that um, Reformed theologians have solved this dilemma is with the language of, self, um, of sign and things signified. The Westminster Confession, which is the most um, important confession for Presbyterians. Some Presbyterian denominations use only the Westminster Standards. My denomination uses a bunch, but we you also use the Westminster Standards. So the Westminster Confession says that in every sacrament there is a spiritual relation between the sign and the thing signified. And the Catechism says the two parts of a sacrament are the sign and the thing signified. So. We agree with our Baptist friend, with our Baptist friends, that baptism is indeed a symbol. It's not magic. The, the water itself is a symbol, and the water itself does not save. But it's connected to what it signifies, which is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and that saves. So, just like with Christology, there's kind of like errors on multiple on on both ends. So we need to distinguish the sign and the thing signified, but we can't separate them. So the Baptists 
tend to separate baptism with water and baptism of the Holy Spirit and talk about like they're they're two separate things. One might symbolize the other, but that's it. There's no real connection between them. And on the other end, you have Catholics who sort of conflate the sign of the thing signified, so they make it seem like the sign automatically gives you the thing signified. So that's why they say any infant who's baptized is automatically has their sins washed away, regardless of whether or not they will have faith later. The Reformed view is quite different from both. The Reformed view is that baptism is a sign with a promise attached, and the promise is activated for those that have faith. And that's why it doesn't contradict salvation by faith alone. So God, of course, doesn't need to work through this physical sign to accomplish his purposes, but he chooses to for our sake, because God knows that we need vis visible signs to look to for assurance. It's the same way, like, circumcision. Like, God didn't need to use that sign to show, that his, show his people that they belong to him, but um, God chose to work through a visible sign because we humans are not like... We're not like 3,000 IQ spiritual beings. We need physical signs to work with. We're physical creatures and we need physical signs. So what John Calvin would say is that baptism and the Lord's Supper, both sacraments, and yeah, we only have two. Some people have like seven, but we only have two. Um, the sacraments are indeed signs, but they're not empty signs. They're not naked and bare signs. John Knox, who's the founder of Presbyterianism, said, we utterly damn the vanity of those who affirm the sacraments to be nothing else but naked and bare signs. So they're signs, but they're not empty because they have a real grace attached to them. But this grace is conditional on us having faith. Um, so an accurate way to summarize the Reformed view of baptism is that baptism saves conditionally only for the elect, and the elect are simply those who have faith. So you could say baptism saves by faith alone. And then there's the question, okay, maybe you could say baptism saves those who have faith, but what if someone has faith and they're not baptized? That's a very good question. So, I guess you could say that baptism is necessary for salvation under ordinary circumstances. None of the Reformed confessions explicitly say this, but um, the modified version of the Lutheran Augsburg Confession says this, and Calvin was willing to sign that version, which said baptism is necessary for salvation. So that shows that that view is at least compatible with um, Reformed theology, to say baptism is, under ordinary circumstances, necessary for salvation. What do I mean? So, like, because God is not bound to the outward signs, let's imagine someone converts to Christianity on a plane and the plane crashes, they die. They don't have a chance to get baptized. Yeah, of course we're not going to say that they are unsaved because they didn't receive the outward sign. Because remember, the outward sign does not save, it's the thing signified that saves, and the sign is linked sacramentally to the thing signified, but not so inseparably, such that one can't be saved without it. That's what the Westminster Confession says. The Westminster Confession says grace and salvation are not so inseparably annexed to baptism so that someone can't be saved without it. Um, some people have interpreted that to say Westminster doesn't believe baptism saves at all, but no, it's, it's assuming that baptism saves under ordinary circumstances, which is why it needs to specify that there's an exception. Uh, people don't seem to understand that. So, yeah, the Reformed view is, well, I don't think any view is that baptism is absolutely necessary. Not even the Catholics think there are no exceptions, but um, if someone, like, dies before getting a chance to get baptized, yeah, they're obviously saved. But what if someone, like, clearly does have a chance to get baptized, like, outwardly, and neglects it? So, if they neglect the sign, it's, it shows that they're probably neglecting the inward thing signified. If someone knows what baptism is, has a chance to get baptized, and neglects it, it shows they're probably neglecting the inward reality signified. Because, of course, the sign is not, um, the sign does not save. But because it's linked to the thing signified, the sign is sort of how we see if someone really is part of the covenant. The sign makes someone outwardly part of the covenant. So if someone is, like, rejecting baptism, I think we have good reason to doubt their salvation. Um, so I think to have full assurance of salvation, everyone needs to get baptized. That's why if someone tells me, like, oh, I'm a Christian, but I don't go to church and I, I'm not baptized yet, I'm like, I don't think I can really consider this person a Christian until they are baptized, which is in which means they're outwardly joining the church and they're, like, participating in the church regularly. Because, I'd say to conclude, the best summary of Reformed views of the sacraments is the verse 1 John 5, 7, 
or 5 8. Um, it's, there are three that testify, the spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three are in agreement. So baptism is not something in addition to faith that someone needs in order to be saved, but um, faith makes baptism and the Lord's Supper effective, and baptism and the Lord's Supper are outward, outward signs that, are, um, that signify the inward realities that cause us to have faith. So they're all connected, and they're all in agreement. So for a true Christian, the, um, they'll be outwardly baptized and inwardly baptized. Those two things will line up. So, in conclusion, does baptism save? Yes, with a bunch of clarifications. All right? Now, a lot of you might be saying, um, like, why haven't I heard this from my Reformed church? Or most of the Reformed pastors I know haven't said this. Yes. Yeah, so, like, in the modern era, like... Reformed churches, even like Presby even truly Reformed churches like Presbyterians and Dutch Reformed, have had like a much lower view of the sacraments than like John Calvin and the original Reformers did. It's due to many things. Like in the modern days, it's due to like a Baptist influence, but before that it was just like revivalism that centralized inward experience over like outward objective religious rituals. So that's why like the views of the sacraments that you'll hear from your, like, average, let's say, PCA or OPC pastor are probably much lower than you would find if you, like, read John Knox or John Calvin talking about the sacraments. So, I, I'm trying to, like, sort of recover the truly reformed views on the sacraments, and because, as you, as I just said, it's complicated, a lot of pastors, even if they know what the re really reformed view is, they just think it's simpler to say it's basically just a symbol. Like, and there, I think a lot of Reformed people are worried that if they say baptism saves, people are going to think we mean what the Catholics mean. So some of them, it's like they know what the Reformed view is, but they try to simplify it. But a lot of them, I think, really just have never read John Knox on the sacraments. They really don't know what the Reformed view is. And what a lot of people think the Reformed view is, is what I would call a Presbapterian view. Presbapterian means they have a Presbyterian view of the outward signs. They call them, like, you know, signs and seals of the covenant. But they don't connect the signs to what they signify the way the Reformed confessions do and the way the Bible does. Jesus says, you need to be born of water and the Spirit. That's sign and thing signified. All right, that's about it for today. I'm going to speed this up now while I do some extra work in my church.